but why do you think there is this huge shift from keeping everything obscure and secret and now you know the whole consciousness has moved into a much more open transparent and you know accessible way of knowledge you said it yourself accessible mm -hmm. publishing mm -hmm. books mm -hmm. and now the internet mm -hmm. has made information more and more accessible mm -hmm. in the past let's say back in buddha's time mm -hmm. you lived in a village mm -hmm. and unless you were a trader mm -hmm. or a soldier mm -hmm. you never went out of your village mm -hmm. So whatever the religion was, whatever the social context or the language mm -hmm. was, that was your world. Mm -hmm. And information mm -hmm. wasn't passed in books, it was passed verbally, mm -hmm. which is very, very slow. Mm -hmm. So take, for example, the tankas, mm -hmm. the Buddhist paintings showing the wheel of life and so on. Each of those symbols has a meaning, mm -hmm. and they would be painted in the temple, some wandering monk mm -hmm. would come, a specialist, mm -hmm. and do these murals. Mm -hmm. And then the teacher monk at the temple mm -hmm. would call all the people and explain everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And after that, mm -hmm. nobody needed any more <laughs> an ex a, a book mm -hmm. explaining it in words. Mm -hmm. uh, because first of all, books were too expensive. Mm -hmm. And second of all, they were very rare. So, and most people couldn't even read. Mm -hmm. But anybody can look at a tanka mm -hmm. and see a symbol and remember, oh, this is the meaning of that symbol. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, in the middle, there are three animals, mm -hmm. and they vary depending on the Buddhist tradition, mm -hmm. in a particular mm -hmm. school. Mm -hmm. But actually what they stand for is ignorance, mm -hmm. lust, mm -hmm. and delusion the three causes of mm -hmm. the gestation mm -hmm. of the material life, the fall. Mm -hmm. The three basic causes of maya, we would call it maya mm -hmm. in Vedanta. Mm -hmm. uh, the causes of illusion mm -hmm. that make even the impossible possible. Mm -hmm. Yes, what I'm getting at as, uh, uh, as the wheel of life, uh, the, the cycle of life is on the microcosm for a person uh, I'm trying to see if you know consciousness itself in the world the mass consciousness has something of a similar you know cycle oh, maybe that is why the whole consciousness is shifting from keeping everything secret to to opening up yes it has to mm -hmm. It has to, because these truths are too important mm -hmm. to keep mm -hmm. secret. Mm -hmm. uh, people are curious. Mm -hmm. They want to know. Mm -hmm. They're suffering. Mm -hmm. They want to heal themselves. Mm -hmm. So there aren't enough gurus, there aren't <laughs> enough spiritual teachers to go around. Mm -hmm. So books and internet and so on are very useful. Mm -hmm. The problem being, mm -hmm. the different terminology is so confusing. Mm -hmm. There isn't a whole model mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that explains the whole thing mm -hmm. in such a way mm -hmm. that the knowledge is transportable mm -hmm. from one tradition, one school, mm -hmm. to another. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. It's like having different computer languages and you can't work with, you know, if you know this, you can't program in that. But when, when you have a computer language which you know, kind of translate, be, translates between everything, so you can you know, work with all the you know, tools that you have. That's an excellent example, because mm -hmm. really we are dealing with language here. Mm -hmm. Now, I studied something called ontology, mm -hmm. starting back in 2003. Mm -hmm. Ontology is, this just gets a little wild, mm -hmm. the meaning of meaning. Mm -hmm. How is meaning created? Mm -hmm. What does meaning mean? Mm -hmm. How does it operate? What does it do? Mm -hmm. Okay, and basically, meaning establishes the boundaries mm -hmm. of our consciousness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If we are unaware of the meaning of something, mm -hmm. we cannot see it as it is, mm -hmm. even if we experience it. Mm -hmm. For example, people have spiritual experiences all the time mm -hmm. because we are spiritual beings. Mm -hmm. 
But because we don't have the knowledge mm. of what this thing is, mm. we miss it. Mm. We miss the significance of it. Mm. So significance is meaning. Mm -hmm. It's also value. Mm -hmm. So if we don't understand the, the value of a certain experience, we may just pass it by mm -hmm. and not make anything of it. Mm -hmm. See, So how is meaning created? Mm -hmm. Meaning comes from context. Mm -hmm. If I have a sentence, mm -hmm. the meaning of every word in that sentence mm -hmm. depends on the whole sentence. Mm -hmm. For example, a simple word like for, mm -hmm. such, mm -hmm. that, if, mm -hmm. and my favorite, <laughs> up. <laughs> Each of these small words has many, many different meanings. Mm -hmm. Up, I think, has 23 different meanings. Mm -hmm. You look in a big dictionary. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. How do we decide which meaning mm -hmm. is appropriate? Depending on what works in that situation and how it relates to all the other meanings. In a word, mm. context. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the context sets the meaning mm -hmm. for all the little pieces within it. Yes. Okay. So if we take this cycle of life mm -hmm. as the context mm -hmm. for any given religious or spiritual teaching, mm -hmm. it becomes very easy now to translate that into a general storyline, mm -hmm. a general plot mm -hmm. of the fall and the path. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to guess mm -hmm. what does this symbol mean, what does this term mean. Mm -hmm. We know mm -hmm. because we have a general context to compare it to. Mm -hmm. And we say, oh, this fits here and that fits there. Mm -hmm. It's like if I'm repairing a car mm -hmm. and in, I don't have the original parts. Mm -hmm. So I have to order from another supplier. Mm -hmm. Well, what is he? He may call the part something different, mm -hmm. or it may have a different part number mm -hmm. or description or something like so that. So this is like standardization, you know, of all that, you know, just like uh, since recently all the mobile phone manufacturers are using the same kind of pin. Thank God for that. Otherwise, <laughs> each, uh, you know, if, if you got a Sony, you would have a different pin, a Nokia different pin. Yeah. So now one thing fits all. So it's for everyone, it's, you know, the context is making it much more accessible. Have you heard of the Rosetta Stone? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Rosetta Stone mm -hmm. gave us the key to hieroglyphics. Mm -hmm. Egyptian hieroglyphics mm -hmm. was completely not understood mm -hmm. up until the middle of the 19th century mm -hmm. where this stone was discovered mm -hmm. that had the same text in Latin, Greek, Phoenician and hieroglyphics. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And because we already knew those other languages, uh -huh. then we could finally translate the hieroglyphics. Uh -huh. It was a huge breakthrough. Mm -hmm. So we have something of the similar mm -hmm. sort mm -hmm. in this cycle of life. Mm -hmm. This is a general context mm -hmm. within which mm -hmm. you can put any specific teaching mm -hmm. and easily understand the relationships of its parts to one another, mm -hmm. even if they're called something completely different or in the form of symbols. Mm. So this could be a breakthrough for a lot of people because uh, people I have seen and in my own life I have been you know going from book to book sometimes uh, this teaching to that teaching kind of trying to uh, find my way through it and what was lacking was a bird's eye view of you know where I was and you know what I'm supposed to do. I was totally confused for a long time and you know until i really met my guru you know it was like oh, what is right what is wrong what is you know what is the path you know but what did your do guru do that allowed you to you know transcend your confusion my guru brought me to the final stage and took me beyond it in one fell swoop. <laughs> he showed you the context mm -hmm. and then the meaning of everything became clear. No, Isn't yeah. it? I wouldn't say the context but uh, yes, uh, he took me all the way uh, to, to the goal and then after reaching the goal when I looked back 
I could see, okay, this is where I've been. Yeah. And now I understand in hindsight yeah. what you know these things meant in my life. Because like, the goal is the context yes. for the whole teaching. Mm -hmm. It gives it meaning. Yes, yes. See, mm -hmm. once you reach the goal, it's like climbing a mountain. Mm -hmm. uh, you get all the way to the top of the mountain, mm -hmm. then you can see, mm -hmm. oh, there's my path that I took, and then there's these other paths that other people could take. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, this, let's take this analogy further. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're sitting on top of the mountain, mm -hmm. and you can see to the north, mm -hmm. there's somebody coming up from the north side. Mm -hmm. They have to go south mm -hmm. to get to the top. Mm -hmm. But then you see somebody coming from the south side, mm -hmm. they have to go north to get to the top. Mm -hmm. Now, if those two guys meet, maybe they start to argue. Mm -hmm. One must go south. No, one must go north. <laughs> see? Mm -hmm. Because they're starting from a different place. Mm -hmm. They're on a different position on the, on the mountain. Mm -hmm. So they have to go a different way mm -hmm. according to where they came from. This is context. Yes. You're sitting on top, you can see all this, mm -hmm. but those guys struggling up one side or the other of the mountains, they can't see. Mm -hmm. see? So what we want to do for understanding is to help people see mm -hmm. how really there's one mountain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you may climb the mountain this way mm -hmm. or that way, mm -hmm. that's a detail. Mm -hmm. The main thing is the goal. Mm -hmm. and this is where Ramana Maharshi was pivotal mm. in the understanding of this because he, of all the personalities in recent history, mm. best exemplifies that goal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He, in, in case anybody listening doesn't know, mm. Ramana Maharshi attained spontaneous enlightenment at the age of 16 mm -hmm. without doing any sadhana, <laughs> without studying anything, without having a guru. <laughs> I'm not going to tell the whole story here because I don't want to get too much. Mm -hmm. But he is the only mm -hmm. uh, and best example in recent history mm -hmm. of what we call a nitya siddha, mm -hmm. someone who is spontaneously enlightened by nature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So as the, the Buddha taught, there have been many people like that mm -hmm. down through history, but we never heard of them mm -hmm. because they simply disappeared. And Ramana almost mm -hmm. disappeared mm -hmm. if it wasn't for Sheshadri mm -hmm. Swamigal mm -hmm. who found him in a cave yeah. uh, and, and literally rescued him yeah, from all the, from the yeah. insects and snakes <laughs> and stuff and uh, in that way saved his life mm -hmm. and, uh, because he was gone, man. He was just <laughs> in samadhi mm -hmm. and completely oblivious mm -hmm. to the world. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, our good fortune. <laughs> <laughs>